What's up family? Today we have an update in regards to our SNAP recipients who receive benefits on their EBT cards. We have some major, major changes that is happening uh, sometime this year, uh, multiple different changes, and I want to share that information with you. Starting off, we do need to go ahead and tell you about the recent uh, issue where these errors in regards to distributing food assistance, specifically in the Washington, D.C. area, and now they are facing millions of dollars in fines for errors in regards to distributing uh, this particular food assistance. The United States government is giving Washington, D.C. a smack on the hand, guys, with a $4.4 million punishment. You heard me correctly, $4.4 million for these particular errors in the benefit processing of an important food assistance program. This particular fine results from a high rate of inaccuracy in regards to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or better known as SNAP Benefits Distribution. Uh, the District of Columbia has surpassed the allowable error level established by the USDA for the second year in a row. In an alarming 20% of the instances that were analyzed and reviewed and audited, the agency discovered that DC SNAP participants were either underpaid or overpaid or overpaid by officials. Uh, yes, these major errors has pretty much disrupted lives as well as it actually has left some families completely hungry, completely lost, complete without these benefits. Now, these particular errors, though seemingly administrative, had a significant real world impact. Having the wrong amount allocated, whether an overpayment or an underpayment, can cause confusion and disrupt families' ability to put food on the table. Uh, these particular situations is further complicated by the lengthy time frame it can actually take to rectify these particular errors. Advocates report that it can take months for the DC Department of Human Services to even identify the discrepancies, often leaving the burden of raising the issue with officials on the families themselves. Uh, but anyways, guys, just wanted to let you know about that, that uh, just in case you thought that the SNAP program was completely on top of things, well, just to let you know that it is not. It is obviously not. If you guys uh, participate in receiving SNAP benefits, you know firsthand that there are obviously some issues within the SNAP program, whether you live in D.C. or Dallas-Fort Worth area. There are major, major issues. And this is just pointing out a uh, one particular state uh, that is having these particular issues. And they are trying to make a huge statement by issuing this $4.4 million in fines because of these major errors that have gone on for more than two years. Now, like I said, this is not the only state that is dealing with these particular errors, and we will probably continue to see more states uh, dealing with this as well. But for right now, D.C. has been hit with one of the largest fines uh, in history, guys, $4.4 million. Now, in addition to that, we also see right here where the USDA has now fined Alaska $11.9 million for failing to ensure that SNAP recipients are actually eligible for the SNAP program. The federal agency behind the food stamp program is assessing an $11.9 million fine on the state of Alaska for failing to accurately gauge who is eligible for benefits according to the letter from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food, and Nutrition Service. Now, for the second year in a row, Alaska's so-called payment error rate for the SNAP program topped more than 50%. Also, for the second year in a row, Alaska's error rate is the highest in the nation at 60%. The rates released Friday cover the one-year period between October of 2022 through September of 2023. Now, generally, payment errors come from the state agencies incorrectly recertifying someone who's not eligible uh, for the program or calculating the benefit amount incorrectly. Uh, the vast majority of Alaska's errors were overpayments, according to the Food and Nutrition Service. Uh, the director of the State Division of Public Assistance, which administered the program, said the high rate isn't a sign that Alaskans are defrauding the program. These are largely unintentional, she said. They can result from a number of reasons, as simple as clerical errors or just you know, a misunderstanding of the direction of the client's behalf. Or in this case, 
a misunderstanding on the state's behalf. So yes, they are taking responsibility for these particular errors and saying that it is probably uh, more than likely because of the state's issues that they have in regards to the particular client or uh, the SNAP recipient. And they are saying that this is just a misunderstanding. They have failed for the second year in a row, hitting the highest numbers. And uh, we thought that $4.4 million was a lot in fines, but take a look at Alaska, guys, $11.9 million. This is the largest that we have ever seen. And SNAP recipients are typically required to recertify that they are eligible for the program every six months. Uh, uh, Etheridge said that the state initially misrepresented a federal policy that they thought allowed state officials to extend that multiple times. And in fact, she said, the state was only allowed to extend it one time. So anyways, guys, like I said, the state of Alaska is admitting that they are at fault. It is their issue. It was clearly a clerical misunderstanding because they thought that you could potentially uh, renew every single year, but you can only do it one time. And therefore, that has pretty much led to these errors that have been uh, introduced for the state of Alaska. And now they are facing the consequences with this huge fine of $11.9 million. That is a lot of money. And I only want to ask the question, are the recipients in Alaska going to be suffering from this huge issue and the fines that have been assessed? Are they going to be the result of this or not? Is it going to affect them or is it not going to affect them? If you live in Alaska and you know this answer, comment down below and let me know about this, guys. I am curious to see how uh, these misunderstandings within the state is going to affect the individual people in the state of Alaska. But uh, anyways, guys, moving on, we also want to go ahead and talk about this right now, that lawmakers, we've heard this before, and lawmakers are blasting the USDA for uh, these SNAP payment errors. And we are talking about overpayments, underpayments, and uh, just all sorts of things, guys. And uh, right here it says that the USDA is now offering compensation to dairy farmers that have been affected by the bird flu. Senators raise concerns over Chinese cooking oil imports. Uh, and yes, they are trying to clarify the trade agreement uh, within Chile. But uh, anyways, guys, like I said, these SNAP errors, it says right here that SNAP payment errors are up slightly a little bit more in 2023 and 2024. A new USDA USDA report shows that the SNAP program payment error rate from the fiscal year of 23 was 11.68 percent. Overpayments accounted for a little bit over 10 percent of the errors and a slight increase from 2022. And those rates are still well above the 7.36 percent overall error rate that was reported back in 2019. Uh, so anyways, guys, that is just an overall in regards to these particular errors. And it kind of shows you how they have pretty much increased over the last three to four years or so. And now the USDA is coming down hard on these particular states saying that, look, you are over the threshold and we are at the point of sending a clear message to you saying that you have violated your terms and you will be assessed a huge fine. It says right here that, look, we are sending a clear message to all states. Accuracy in SNAP is non-negotiable. We expect state leadership at all levels to be fully engaged in this effort to improve moving forward. So again, guys, just wanted to give you that update in regards to this, and we still need to know how this is going to affect our SNAP recipients. Hopefully it does not affect them, but you never know. Getting hit with $12 million fine, that money's gotta come from somewhere, right? Uh, but anyways, guys, what do you think about this? Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to get your thoughts on this. Outside of all of that, uh, moving on to one of the other topics that I definitely wanna discuss with you, uh, the state of Florida, they recently passed a new law and now SNAP uh, recipients are facing a little bit of challenges. It says right here that SNAP benefit recipients are facing more requirements under this new Florida law. A bill that was recently signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis will require many of the 3 million Floridians who get SNAP benefits. And if they don't meet these requirements, they could lose their benefits that help pay for their food to put food on their table. What you need to know is that uh, the bill is recently signed by Governor Ron DeSantis and uh, part of the new law requires recipients between the ages of 18 and 59 years old with no one under 18 in the household to complete a minimum of 80 hours a month of an employment workforce training program. 
DCF rolled out the expanded requirements back in 2023 after the federal government made changes to the program. And now some people don't even know uh, this actually exists. They're having a little bit of trouble getting the word out, spreading it to Floridians, letting them know that you might have to uh, participate in one of these particular training programs. And now because they were not made aware of this, that they have to take that training, some of them are losing their benefits. And according to the state, saying that, look, I'm medically complex, but I don't get Medicaid. I don't get SSI. I've been rejected for everything, she said. So the only real medicine I have right now is to eat healthy. Roy said that she doesn't think her health would allow her to complete all of the hours that are required to maintain her benefits in this particular training program. And then uh, she's also said that, look, the only way that I'm going to be able to speak to you right now is because I had a beta blocker earlier. So uh, my heart would regulate and my breathing wouldn't be too heavy. She said there are days where I can hardly move because of my joints and I can't get medical care right now. So how can I participate in this training that is perceivably uh, being required of me? And then also another person said that, look, I'm clinging on to my life right now and I'll absolutely keep fighting the fighting spirit I have so far. She said that, look, but God, but God cut citizens a bit of a break. She's asking for God at this point. Too late to just ask for the USDA to give her some slack. Too late to ask for the state of Florida to give her some slack. She is saying calling on God uh, to give her a bit of a break. So yeah, this particular law is changing a little bit of uh, things that are going on in Florida and uh, some individuals are still unaware of this. So that is who is going to affect uh, people the most because they just don't even know. So here they are expecting and waiting on their EBT benefits to be deposited on their EBT cards. And uh, you just keep continue to keep checking and realizing that no money is coming because you pretty much getting been kicked out of the SNAP benefits program and you're no longer receiving those benefits. So uh, anyways, uh, if you do know someone in Florida or yourself, be aware of this new law that has changed because it does affect some people, not necessarily everybody, but it does affect some individuals. So uh, you definitely want to look up more information in regards to that. And then also guys, last but not least, I do want to go ahead and talk to you about uh, lawmakers have been recently pushing for our EBT cars to be uh, have included the chip technology uh, that kind of cuts down on the scammers stealing your uh, all of your benefits from your EBT cards. Well, uh, Pennsylvania is now advocating uh, for this particular push, uh, including the chips uh, within the EBT cards to provide that additional layer of protection from fraud. Uh, anyways, it says right here that Pennsylvania advocates and lawmakers are pushing for EBT cards with chip technology to prevent stolen SNAP benefits. So yes, we've talked about this a little bit previously in the past and uh, here we are again more information in regards to this uh, just stay tuned just a little bit more but more than 2 million Pennsylvanians are receiving SNAP benefits this year formerly known as food stamps including nearly half a million people in Philadelphia and now they're saying that look uh, people are just robbing other people of their money that they need to feed their families robbing and stealing their money directly from the EBT cards without them even knowing. They go to the gas station, use their car. Next thing you know, I have no money left on my EBT card. This is happening everywhere, guys, not just Philadelphia, but in all states that have a SNAP a recipient. So uh, that is just one of the few. But anyways, in regards to Philadelphia, uh, their news is saying that uh, their investigations are uncovered. This ongoing breach is happening across Philadelphia region and the nation could also be prevented by making a common upgrade to the debit card itself. Yes, that common upgrade that all states need to do and implement is just adding a chip of technology. This type of chip, which is on your basic credit cards like your Visa and your MasterCard, it is going to add that extra layer of protecting you when you use your card at the gas station, when you use your card at the 7-Eleven, when you use your card at the uh, local convenience store. It needs to protect you because uh, our Americans, guys, uh, SNAP recipients, they just can't afford uh, to just 
have their money wiped away? What if they were planning on paying for their food that night and then they end up getting their money wiped away just because they went to the gas station before they went to go pick up their food? That could be devastating. And like I said, this is happening all over the place, guys. And now Philadelphia is really, really, really pushing for this effort uh, for them to go ahead and make the conscious effort to include chip technology on the next round of EBT cards. So uh, anyways, guys, like I said, multiple states are actually considering this. Some states have already said that they will be uh, introducing the uh, chip technology in their EBT cards. Uh, specifically right here, we just received word that New York has now confirmed that it's moving to a chip-enabled EBT card. Like I said, this is happening all over the country. Multiple states are still, uh, some of them are pushing to get it, and then some of them have already acknowledged and saying that they are going to be moving to this technology. So we all know that this is going to happen sooner or later, but we are still waiting for uh, the confirmation from the multiple states saying that they are going to do it this year or in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. We are waiting for more information related to that. So uh, anyways, that is some good news that is coming soon. So it does give us a little bit of something to look forward to. But so far, be aware, guys, these scammers, they are out there. Be careful where you use your EBT cards. Do not become victim to this because uh, these scammers out there, they are racking up thousands, if not millions of dollars by stealing other people's SNAP benefits directly from their EBT cards without them even knowing. So uh, anyways, guys, hopefully you haven't become a victim and hopefully you do not become a victim as well. I give you a little bit of information right here to protect yourself. Be careful where you use your card. You never know where there might be a scanner attached to that credit card machine. Protect yourself, guys. Also, share this video with other people, guys, because they need to know as well. It is crucial. It is crucial, guys, to not become a victim. So, uh, but anyways, guys, uh, I would love to get your thoughts on this. Please, if you get an opportunity, comment down below. And don't forget to hit the like button on this video. It really helps this video get shared with other people. And then also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Become a part of the Budget Bill family. But outside of all that, I hope to see you on the next video.